Okay, welcome back to Luke's Motor Shop. Today, I'm gonna to be working on this 1974 Ducati again. I'm gonna be mainly focusing on the electrical side of things. Uh, so a long time ago, the ignition burnt out on this bike. Uh, so I decided to do something neat and change it over to an RFID ignition. So this is the actual antenna for it here. So you just tap that, it connects to a latching relay. And then, uh, so the latching relay keeps the power on until it's disconnected. And so that's what the kill switch is for. So it works really good, but I have a few other electrical problems, um, especially with this fuse box here. Uh, so I'm gonna change that out to the blade style uh, fuse box, something a little bit more modern. And then also this switch up here. Um, I can't remember why I have, it all, I have it all taken apart like this but I know there's an issue inside of this fuse, or is rather inside the switch um, to sort out. And the main fuse on the bike here, I had to hack this together to, when I was on the side of the road at one point to uh, get it running again. So I'm just gonna go through uh, the various electrical problems that I had before the bike broke down and get everything back up to 100% um, and make sure that you know the bike's reliable. I, I've constantly been, up, been upgrading the electronics on this bike, you know, going to the Dyna coils, uh, the Sachet ignition system that's coming in, this uh, new RFID ignition. Um, and I plan on just continuing to make it more and more reliable because the one major problem with these bikes is the electrical system on them. So the next upgrade that I'm gonna do is the fuse box, change that out to the blade style and then I'll move forward from there uh, to chase down the rest of the issues that I'm having. All right, so this is the wiring diagram for the RFID ignition and the latching relay. So this is an extra one that I have here. So what you do is you signal the antenna with the key. It sends power to the relay, uh, which latches closed. And it, so that sends power to the rest of the bike, to the coils and the lights until the power to the relay itself is cut. So that's where the master, the, the, the kill switch comes in. So once you flick the bike off with the kill switch, it cuts the power to the relay, which cuts the power to the rest of the bike. So that's kind of how the whole system works together. And uh, so I'm just gonna start going through all my electrical problems and making sure everything works properly. Okay, so I got that main fuse back installed. Here is the one that I hacked in there before. Uh, and I've just been going over everything. So my the headlights work off the switch here. Uh, signal lights are not working at all. Uh, running light at the back, not working. Signal lights at the back, at the back not working. Um, now what is working is at least the RFID unit is receiving a signal. See when I bring this close to there, the indicator light here is, is working. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the latching relay is receiving power from the RFID unit. Uh, then I'll make sure that some of the other circuits are working and start tracking down why my tail light isn't working and why the signal lights aren't working and then i'll have all the information that i need to um change out the fuse box just trying to chase down i don't want to change too much and then and then get into some situation where i'm not sure what's going on so i'm just going to chase down a few more problems do a little bit more investigation today and then i'll order the parts that i need and uh, to clean up my, my bullshit wiring that I did before. Okay, so I think what I said about the kill switch was wrong to begin with. What I think I did when I was on the side of the road is this hacked together thing that I did here was for the lighting system, for the headlights and for the taillights. Uh, and the ignition system still works off of the, the kill switch and the RFID ignition. So 
Um, and I think that all comes back to this fuse box being kind of a piece of shit. So I'm gonna keep doing some testing and then make sure, and then I'll figure out what to do with, with this guy. I think that guy just needs to go into a spot on the fuse box. So I'm gonna keep chasing down my problems here and figuring out what I did in the past. picked up uh, this fuse box, six uh, circuit fuse box just off of Amazon there. Uh, so that's going to replace the uh, this shitty um, old style fuse box here with the, with the, I don't even know what these fuses are called. And then I've also taken off the gauge cluster and I'm kind of deciding uh, what I'm gonna do up here. And here um, I'm having some issues with this switch so I'm going to replace that switch also. So, but right now I'm gonna start at the back, working with the fuse box, getting this whole area cleaned up, and then I'll move on to the issues that I'm having at the front of the bike. So, let's get into it. New fuse box in, old fuse box out, let's go. All right, so I got the fuse box mounted on there uh, in its final spot, it looks great. Um, I changed around how the wires were routing into it and uh, kind of redid some of the connections. This was the main power feed and it was a pretty loose connection inside there. So I redid that. So now I'm gonna move on to some mounting the other pieces like the rectifier, I'm gonna put that back in the same spots. Then there's the flasher relay. I'll find a good spot for that too. And I also need to mount this. This is the latching relay, which is part of the um, RFID ignition system. And there's definitely something going on inside of this. So that might be part of the reason why my ignition wasn't working properly. So I'm gonna pop this open and see what's going on inside of it. And it might be a really easy fix for my wiring problem that I had to do this whole hack job for. So um, I'm going to, just continue going and mount the rectifier, pop this open and continue with all this. All right, so I opened up the uh, latching relay to see what's going on inside of it. And there's uh, two of these capacitors that broke off from the circuit board, uh, likely due to vibration. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research and see if there's more a more durable version of this latching relay or maybe if I mount it in a different position, because the, these likely came off due to vibration. So mounting it in a different position will likely help, but uh, I'm just gonna look up and see if there's one that's a little bit more durable than this. So I'm just gonna trim out the box like this voltage regulator is here, just for the fuse box there. Uh, so I'll put a piece of tape on top of the cover for the fuse box and outline it with like a paint marker set this on top to get the impression of it, and then I'll be able to use a Dremel tool to cut out the uh, bottom of it. That looks nice and tidy there with the voltage regulator and the fuse box. All right, so now on to the next thing. So the next thing I'm gonna take care of is this switch that I'm having issues with here. Um, with the, uh, uh, there's something shorting out inside of it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. This switch has a lot of functions on it. It has uh, the light, the headlight on off switch, high beam, low beam, and then it also has the signal lights the horn and the flasher. And then this side of the bike doesn't have anything on it. So the set that I bought off of Amazon has the lights, the headlight on off switch on the right side of the handlebars. So what I need to do is, uh, so, so this side has 
low beam, high beam with the flash and then turn signal and horn and this hazard light button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hazard light button into the headlight off on button and then the rest of the functionality of this is gonna stay the same because I have never used hazard lights on a bike before and I don't intend on using them on this bike. Um, I did have I did have a whole plan to use a moto gadget, uh, the momentary switches and all that, but just for wiring simplicity's sake, I'm going to use this switch the way it is instead of overcomplicating my life with the wiring on this bike. Um, and the switch, I mean, it's a little bit bulky, but it looks okay. And um, so that's just gonna be my personal preference of this being the, the light on off button. And then all of the other functions of this are gonna stay the same. So I'm gonna start figuring this out, figure out how I'm gonna get this plug in, integrated into the rest of the bike. <clears throat> and then um, just finish up the wiring and test it all out, see if it works, and then start figuring out this ignition wiring that I've been avoiding. So one thing at a time, get this switch installed, and then I'm gonna move on to everything else. All right, so I sat on the bike, everything's feeling really comfortable. This is gonna work with the with the clutch handle here and everything. So now I'm going to, uh, so I marked out where the switch sits with some tape and a pen. So now I need to take it off. There's a pin in the back of this uh, half. That's why it's not all the way clamped in. So I'm gonna have to drill that hole in the handlebar uh, to actually set this in place so it doesn't turn. And then I'll be able to permanently mount the switch and start on the uh, wiring. So I nailed uh, drilling the hole in the back of that down to mount the switch. Looks a hell of a lot better than the old one. There, all faded and sun damaged. So now I just need to figure out the wiring uh, for the all the buttons up here. And I'm gonna see if I can actually make this the headlight switch, because this might be integrated into the wiring for that guy in here. I gotta check the wiring diagram. But looks really good. Uh, so now, wiring, let's do it. All right, so what I was afraid of is true. The, the hazard light that I'm planning on turning into the headlight on off switch, uh, the wires are integrated here. Like this is, I don't know, the left signal or the right signal here. So it's integrated into that. So I'm going to figure out, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll separate the the union here and then i'll run a new wire a new color through here to the plug Okay, so I've been diving deep into the electrical on this bike and there's a few interesting things. I think I know why this is, so this is the left hand switch here. I think I know why it burned down. There's, there's no relays between the switch and the actual headlight. So if you follow the yellow wire here, it basically goes through this plug, through this plug, and then directly to the headlight. So that's coming from here and it comes, it goes from the left hand control handlebar into this plug 
and then just loops through the wiring harness, goes directly into this plug, and then up into the headlight here. So that means that all the, the all the high amperage power that actually powers the headlight and the high beams is going directly through the, the left handlebar switch. So that's probably why the switch burned out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add two relays, one for the low beam and one for the high beam between the switch and the headlight. So that's these guys here. These are just, you know, off of Amazon. Um, so, what I'm gonna do, okay, the way a relay works is there's the hot wire which comes from the, from the fuse box which is the high amperage draw for the headlight or the, the high beam. And then there's the low amperage wire which actually triggers the switch. So when you hit the switch on the handlebar to turn the headlight on, it closes this switch. So the high amperage draw is going through the relay instead of through the switch itself. So we're gonna take the high amperage load off of the switch, which will make the switch more reliable, and we're gonna send it through these relays instead. Um, I have this, this extra wire, which was up in the headlight there. So I'll probably use that as the high amperage draw for the relays. I gotta double check and see if that's what fuse that comes out of in the fuse box. So we'll use that to power the relays, and then I'll interrupt the, the switch wire that's here and have it trigger the relay and then have that send the power up to the headlight. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna position these up here. Um, it'll probably be something like that or something like that. Put the two of them beside each other there. Actually, that looks, that looks really good. Nice and up and under the tank. So, okay, so I'm probably gonna position them like that. And uh, this is just gonna make everything more reliable. And I'm gonna avoid burning all wires. Like I'm seeing a little bit of damage here. And uh, although I think that's, that's going up to the dash, all this weird wiring that's up here, I'm not too sure what's going on. But right now I'm gonna, I'm just tackling the left hand control and I'm gonna add the two relays in for the low beam and the high beam. The signal already has the flasher relay, which is, you know this unit back here so i don't think i need to add one for the flashers um okay so first we're going to take care of the low beam and high beam then move on to actually the mounting the switch and figuring out the rest of the wire in the switch okay so here we go So this orange wire here is the uh, fuse power from the fuse box there. And that's, you know, the same wire as this, which goes up to the dash to power a bunch of other stuff. So um, I'm going to tap into this orange wire here with this guy, and that's gonna go up to the relay for the horn. The same green wire here that originally powered the horn is gonna be the signal wire for the relay. And then I'm gonna make a new, probably green wire, I guess, to go from the uh, from the relay to the horn. So that's that's basically the idea. Orange is gonna be the power for the relay. Green is gonna be the signal. And then I'm gonna make a new wire that actually goes to the horn. That way, again, the power is not going through the switch. It's going through the relay. Okay, so here we go. I'm finally done with uh, the relays here. So I'm gonna get them into their final place. I'm gonna clean up the loom a little bit. And then I'm going to move on to wiring up the actual uh, switch here. 
so that it communicates properly with this plug. And I'll show you when I actually get started on that. And then I'll be finally done with the handlebar wiring, which is pretty exciting. All right, so now that I have the relays all sorted on, on the bike for the high beam, low beam, and the horn, now I need to incorporate the original plug onto the existing, onto the new um, left-hand switch harness. So I've done some diagrams here about uh, which, which wire connects to which on the new switch versus the old one. And this diagram here is the back of the original um, left-hand controls uh, plug. So I'm just gonna work circuit by circuit, you know, start with the signal lights and switch the wires over, solder them together move on to the high beam low beam and then finish off with the horn and flasher and this is all just based on you know the wiring diagram for the new left hand switch versus what's actually going on on the bike and incorporating the um the new relays that i put in so i'm just going to work pretty carefully go wire by wire and incorporate the new switch with the old harness and then i'll finally be done with the left hand uh switch so here we go So this is going to be the end of the first episode on the electrical build on this bike. Um, in the next one, I take care of, you know, finalizing the system, getting the ignition to work with the latching relay, finalizing the relays. And, you know, just, I made a few mistakes going over this. So it's just a little bit of troubleshooting and making sure everything works. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.